Welcome to Jason Mitchell Outdoors Television. Join us as we showcase some of the greatest hunting and fishing opportunities across the Midwest. There we got him. Whoa! There's a fish. Whoa. Just like Look at that. that. Thanks so All right. much. That's a beauty. Got it. Today's show is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Yardcraft Boats, Evinrude BRP, Jason Mitchell Elite Series Rods, North Dakota Tourism, Legendary, Cooper Chevrolet, Clam Ice Fishing, Northland Fishing Tackle, U.S. Reel, Trigger X, Salmo Fishing Lures, and Bionic Line. Follow Jason Mitchell Outdoors online at jasonmitchelloutdoors.com or become a fan on Facebook. How's that one feel, Joe? Nice. Hold and down. Came easy at first. Now he's going past the boat. Passing the boat? <laughs> he's gonna stump right out here. See that? Oh yeah, that's what he wants to do too. <laughs> Here's to see what this fish is. Very good boy. There's my way. Here we go. Boy, isn't that pretty? Feels a little there. different having somebody yeah. down for me. That is pretty, huh? Welcome to this episode of Jason Mitchell Outdoors. I tell you what, we're in a region that has a lot of water, literally hundreds of lakes, so many different fishing opportunities, and this area just keeps getting better and better each year. Northeastern South Dakota in that Glacial Lakes area, we're fishing with a gentleman who I would say, in my humble opinion, probably spends as much time out here as anybody, Joe Horner. You can catch fish during the day. You don't have to wake up early. A lot of cases, you don't even need wind, obviously. You get yeah. wind out here, but uh, and a lot of times that, a lot of times the wind will actually help the bite, but yeah. if you don't get it, the water usually has enough color where middle of the day can be the best time of the day, can't yeah. it? Yeah, like you say, this last week, they've been lighting up around noon. One o'clock. Generally speaking, your worst walleye hours, but they're <laughs> they just rise up off the bottom and start going like crazy. And that has to be attributed to just the water color. That, and I think it's primarily, uh, you know, your worm, your invertebrates, worm and invertebrates. And yeah, your freshwater shrimp and air. That fish uh, just drilled deal. it. <laughs> That fish just drilled it. Oh yeah, nice walleye. Another thing that strikes me too, Joel, is just the number of lakes. I mean, how many lakes are within 60 miles of us? Oh, hundreds. If you're counting big sloughs that have turned into lakes, you know, there's 15 lakes actually within 15 miles of Eden. Mm -hmm. Then they're getting where they you know, they have all kinds of things to offer. They got the deep rock piles, they got everything. It's not just fishing a shallow bowl no more. Mm -hmm. This lake's got 34 feet of water in the basin now. It looks better. We're right off the end of that point there. Oh, yeah, there's a nice big perch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't that pretty? And that is another species that this area is well known for, but. A lot of people are fishing for perch in the winter time, but I tell you what. There's a bunch of them that size and big yeah. in here. If you're like me, you'll take these any time of the year, any time <laughs> you can get them, huh? They're my favorite eating. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that a beauty? 12 inches. And I hate to say it, but in this area, this is kind of a small one, isn't it? They get a yeah. lot bigger. I mean, there's there's obviously a lot smaller perch around, but boy, some of the some of the fish. I mean, they're, they're, they'll see fish over two pounds in this area yeah. pretty consistently each winter, won't you? Yeah, we get about a half a dozen to a dozen that are over 14 a year, you know. Mm -hmm. That's about two pound class, and they're so thick. They're yeah. Just, 
And besides being very weed resistant, another advantage that soft plastic like a Trigger X is going to give you is that you can often catch numerous fish on one bait. Catch several fish on it until they basically tear it up. But what we're doing is we're putting a Northland spinner harness. We're hooking the Trigger X. We're using the fluke tails, the worms, the leeches. When the fish are really aggressive, it doesn't really seem to matter. Just more or less just having the right shape. And that spinner blade seems to help in this really stained water. And chartreuse is a really good color down here in these green algae stained lakes. But what we're doing is we're shortening up the snail. We're putting it on a short snail behind a bottom bouncer. And a bottom bouncer works really well because obviously it helps you find the bottom. But the other thing that a bottom bouncer does when you're fishing these weed bed edges is that the weeds will have a tendency to collect on the bottom bouncer and not on the business end of your hook. You don't want weeds on this. If you have weeds on this, you're not going to catch much. Whereas you can drag a lot of weeds on this as long as this is still kicking behind it weed free, you can still catch fish. Fish. Yeah. Coming with the net here, Joe. There we go. That's the beauty there. Boy, these fish are smacking it hard, aren't they, Joe? I don't know, I'd have to ask you lately. <laughs> I get bit they stay more. down nice too. Yeah. Fish hey, just got some spunk to them. There. there we go. There we go. Oh, nice pike. <laughs> Big bruiser again. Yeah, that's a nice one. How was the field, Joe? He's a little heavier. I'll get the net here for you. Yeah, it'll be a netter, I think. Unless he's been on steroids or something. The way these fish are shaped, you'd never know. Oh yeah, that's a nice walleye. Came off in the net, but they all count the same, don't they? Yep. I'll take them. Yeah. But typical, these prairie lakes, high water, healthy fish. You know, lots, lots of invertebrates. Young of the year bait fish. That's growing and thicker than me. Yeah, it's going, you know, kind of the proverbial fish factory. Follow Jason Mitchell Outdoors online at jasonmitchelloutdoors.com or become a fan on Facebook. So whenever you're fishing weeds or debris on the bottom where you just need a little bit of durability on that, on that live bait, this synthetic stuff is, is the ticket. And the thing I like about this Trigger X is that not only is it durable, but walleyes in particular will hold on to it for a long time. And so whether I'm pitching jigs, pulling bouncers and harnesses, when you have fish that will hang on to that jig, you know, say twice as long as what they would on, on a different type of soft plastic, that gives you a real big advantage when it comes time to set the hook. Good Joe. Oh, come off. Yours came off? I got mine here fish. still. That'll be right there, sir. Yeah, nice fish. Yeah, there. Perfect. If you're a walleye fisherman, you couldn't ask for anything more than to just catch enormous numbers of fish like that. That's as, that's as good as it gets right there. And realistically, you can target really good crappie fishing on some lakes, smallmouth bass. They get enormous down here in this area. There's no shortage of walleyes. You have northern pike. Even some lakes have some pretty good bluegills. And obviously the jumbo perch made this area famous in the wintertime. So you can kind of pick your poison. What's interesting is some of these lakes have a pretty good fish variety where they have a little bit of everything. But there's some lakes, for example, that are phenomenal smallmouth lakes. Yeah. Some lakes that are full of walleyes. And you could fish you know, a couple different lakes or more a day if you wanted to. There are different kinds of bodies of water, you know, depending on how you like to fish them. There's a lot of backwater for the... There's some great largemouth bass fishing, Clear and Roy. Mm -hmm. You know, they've caught a lot of fish in that five to six pound range and up to seven. A lot of times you'll mark fish in these spots where you're catching them, and so trust your electronics. There's so many fish in these lakes that a lot of times when you find them, you know, you're gonna see them. And the program here is pretty similar to a lot of these lakes down here you can see the weed beds it's the middle of summer and obviously earlier on in the summer you might not see these weed beds reaching the surface but come late summer you know you can see wherever there's weed beds you basically run along the outside edge 
right along that brake line and you just go until you mark fish and when you mark fish stop and fish them and it's really that simple. There's a, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Three seconds later you catch him. So the moral of the story is trust your electronics. <laughs> Staying down nice. Yeah. Just a fun, scrappy fish. Oh yeah, there's a beautiful walleye there. Isn't that a dandy? There we go. Oh, thank you, Joe. Thank you for just an incredible day of walleye fishing. If you like the walleye fish, this is just definitely an area to put on your radar. Special thanks to Joe Horner, uh, who put us on in the fish a day. And if you'd like to find out more information on fishing with Joe, we'll have his information on the bottom of the screen. If you want to fish this area, a great resource to check out is at South Dakota Glacial Lakes Tourism Association. It has a website with a lot of information, lodging, dining, guide services, accommodations, and a lot of other things to do besides hunting and fishing. We'll see you next week on Jason Mitchell Outdoors.